Hello, this is Brian. Today is Sunday, February 28th, 2021. And today I want to present a spotlight on shrubs and trees. Bear with me. It's very breezy, so there's going to be a lot of wind noise in the camera. I apologize. But I want to spotlight a shrub I've been trying to spotlight for the last couple of weeks. Now that it's in bloom, it's time to spotlight the hoary leaf Ceanothus. This is Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius. It is a fairly common fixture of Southern California chaparral. It's generally a lower to mid elevation shrub and sometimes it can grow like a small tree, especially in, on north facing slopes. These shrubs can form very dense stands. So, Crassifolius, hoary leaf. Well, ho Crassifolius does not mean hoary leaf. So, the Latin name Crassifolius deals with the thickness of the foliage. The leaves are very thick and leathery, like a lot of other chaparral shrubs are. So, when you got here, hoary leaf Ceanothus, the, the hoary portion refers to the pubescence on some of the new leaves here. These leaves uh, have little light light down on them, a little bit of hair, and the underneath has a light coating of hair. Makes it kind of a whitish color underneath. Now, Ceanothus crassifolius is divided up into at least two varieties. We have Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius, and then we have Ceanothus crassifolius variety planus, P-L-A-N-U-S. Now, Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius is your typical variety, and it's not quite as evident on this shrub for some reason, but the leaves kind of curl over. See, here's the midrib right here, and then the leaves curl down on both sides. Some of these shrubs show it very strongly. Some of these shrubs don't show as much as others, and those ones with the, the, curv the curvature of the top of the leaves, they are denoted as variety crassifolius. See, this one's strongly revolute. You can see this one's curled very strongly. So that is what Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius is. Strong, uh, moderately to strongly revolute leaves, and that means curled, curled down from the middle to the sides. And variety planus, like a plane, P-L-A-N-E, a plane, flat. And those don't really have that. So a lot of the, the variety planus leaves are kind of similar to some of these, only they'll be flatter. So for Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius, that is our most common form here. I am right now on North Main Divide Road, the paved portion. It becomes uh, dirt in about a mile and a half or so, mile and a half up the way, before you get down to Falcon Group Campground. But here, I'm about an elevation of 3,000 feet, and this is a common shrub at that elevation. So here, at the Santa Ana Mountains, this can be quite a common fixture. Here comes a bike, so be prepared for a little loud engine roar. I wanted to find one along a trail, <laughs> but okay. So, again, variety planus would be flat. The most common variety here in Southern California, to my knowledge, is variety crassifolius, what we're looking at here. However, variety planus, variety planus, I don't think shows up on Calflora. Calflora is the database you use to uh, pinpoint where certain species of California plants have been vouchered. Well, variety planus does not show up, to my knowledge, on the Calflora site in Orange County. And I'm in barely in Orange County right now. I'm really close to the Riverside County border. But I am in Orange County. And Santa Ana Mountains more specifically is what I'm referring to. But if you read Fred M. Roberts and Robert Allen's Wildflowers of Orange County in the Santa Ana Mountains, they do have some they they he they note that variety planus can be found in the Santa Ana range. So, the reason why I wanted to wait till now to do a spotlight is because I wanted to spotlight the biggest obvious thing 
that's noticeable the whole time I've been here filming the white flowers these shrubs can can bloom profusely a really good place to see this shrub here in the Santa Ana mountains is over near on Ortega Highway right by the candy store the Bear Canyon trailhead because when you start hiking when you get across the street because you get the parking lot for the San Juan Loop Trail and then you cross the street by the candy store there's the Bear Canyon Trailhead. Once you start going up the Bear Canyon Trail very short time in you're gonna notice a f literal forest of these on both sides of you. These are about 10, 15, maybe even a little bit taller 10, 15 feet maybe a little bit taller and they actually form like miniature trees and sometimes they can be single trunked. So this is not always a multi-trunk shrub like the typical chaparral species is. A lot of times I have found these to be single trunk. Also, the lower Holy Jim Trail, when you start switchbacking up, when, once you start switchbacking up above uh, Holy Jim Canyon's bottom, you start going up the switchbacks a little ways, you start running into a forest of these as well. So sometimes these things can form very tall plants and very, very beautiful exuberant blooms. See, these are one of the earlier species of Ceanothus to bloom. Right now we're still in late February, but I've seen these blooming as early as early mid-February at even lower elevations here in the Santa Ana range. Now you will find this also in the San Gabriels, you'll find it in the San Bernardino Mountains, you'll find it in a lot of our other mountain ranges here as well. And it's pretty much one of the one of the exuberant species they call California lilac. See, note this is also called California lilac. It's not related to the lilac. The Ceanothus is in the buckthorn family, the Remnaceae, with coffee berries in the genus Frangula, uh, spiny and holly leaf red berries in the genus Ramnus, Remnaceae, and of course we got Ceanothus, and a rare San Diego species called Adolf Adolfia californica, a California spine shrub. And l true lilacs in the genus Syringa, S-Y-R-I-N-G-A, are actually in the Oleaceae, the olive family. So, what happens is after the flowers, they start developing these warty seed capsules. It's kind of hard to get a good detail. These seed capsules are just barely starting to form. They're usually kind of crested around the edge, kind of wrinkly on the top. And then they burst open and release the seeds. So after fire disturbance, fire scarification is what helps get these seeds to germinate. Look down here. This is part of the 2018 Holy Fire. And look down here. A bunch of seedling Ceanothus crassifolius variety crassifolius. So the fire did come over here. It must have just missed this shrub, but it came roaring through probably on this grass because you can see everything else here is burnt. A lot of other plants have, ex have dealt with some burn, burning. You can see the tops of that shrub there. All these shrubs here burnt. So the fire licked its way through this area. And as a result, there are a bunch of sapling Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius down here. These guys are way too young to be flowering. They're just, they're not even fully through, they're not even three years old yet. They sprouted probably in the spring of 2019, so they might even, not even be two years old yet. Not even fully two years old. So, that's an adaptation. I am not sure if this one is a burl former. Some species of Ceanothus form root burls from which they sprout after fire. I'm not sure if this is one of them. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, like I said, this can become quite a tall, beautiful specimen. And if you hike in early March, late February, early March, on the Good Chaparral Trail here on the north facing slope here in the Santa Ana Mountains, you're going to be treated to quite a show. Imagine hundreds of these lining the trail. Beautiful shrub. I'm going to go to another one over here. So there's another one here. Looks like it partially survived. And then we got a couple other ones here. This one only partially burnt as well. You see right here. The very top of the tissue did not burn. So the fire, like I said, the fire probably was uh, pretty mellow over here compared to other spots. 
And there you go again. Just imagine what it looks like hiking in a forest of these, a literal forest of these guys. It's, it's, I've, I've been through that a couple of times. Another one is uh, the trail to uh, San Mateo Peak. You'll get uh, some areas of uh, lots of Ceanothus crassifolius. It is one of our show year shrubs. It's purported to have a fragrance to it. Let me go back to the one that's closest to the road here. So I don't have to start scrambling up rocks and stuff. I hiked in two different mountain ranges today. The San Bernardino Mountains and a short hike here in the Santa Ana. So I don't feel like hiking and scrambling again. So let's go back up to this guy here. Make sure we don't step on the babies. Try to see if I can smell. Because Ceanothus, a lot of Ceanothus are supposed to have these perfumey aromas. I think the aromas are more given off over spatial distance. I don't smell much. I'm a little, little congested. But here it is. Ceanothus crassifolius, variety crassifolius. Beautiful shrub. Check it out here in Southern California's mountains. Mostly, a, like I said, mostly a lower elevation species. So if you're looking to climb up Mount Baldy or something, you ain't gonna find it up there. But come in February and March, you can pass this plant and know exactly what it is just by the information I gave you on this video. You don't have to be a plant expert or anything. If you come up here in late February, early March, mid-March, February and March, and you see a bunch of bushes on the side of the road that are decked out in decadent white flowers like this, you already know you're looking at Ceanothus crassifolius. Can I guarantee you what variety it is? No, I can't. can't guarantee you whether it's variety crassifolius or variety planus, but I'm hoping... I have seen some shrubs here in the Santa Ana Mountains on occasion that do really appear to have consistently flatter leaves like variety planus. So, I'm gonna keep my eyes out. If I ever see that variety, I'm gonna, of course, have the camera ready to uh, document it. But, another beautiful day. Kind of wishing I saw some taller specimens, more decadent, and like, uh, like more, more, more shrubs in the area. But I've been desperately trying to get this spotlight out for a while. I've been wanting to show this plant. It's an incredible, be incredibly beautiful shrub, and it's a very important member of our beautiful chaparral communities. So, this is Brian's spotlight on trees and shrubs. Hoary leaf Ceanothus, Ceanothus crassifolius, very crassifolius. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of Spotlight on Trees. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.